Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video. Welcome to this channel where we learn, explore, and taste together the wonderful world of wine. If you're not familiar with the RT1 Exchange, that's a wine investment and trading platform as well as a wine club, check out the link in the video description to learn more. So we are continuing our tour of the best wines of Italy and of the world, uh, really, as we've been through all Italian whites, the bubblies, the Proseccos, Tuscany's, Wonders, Central Italy, etc. so far. And today I want to tell you more about what I call the Piedmont Red Trilogy, three types of red grapes grown in this prestigious Piedmont or Piemonte, as the Italians would say, one of the very best areas for winemaking in Italy, famous in particular for its illustrious Barolo and Barbaresco appellations for the reds, but also it's very famous for the Asti sparkling muscats if we're talking about wines. But, whites. But Piedmont is also reputable among wine connoisseurs for making these three very interesting and distinct styles of red wines out of three different grapes that make very complementary styles with each other, in fact. So there's the rounder, more opulent style of red called Dolcetto. There's a more acidic, freshly fruity, lighter, but very vibrant, sometimes a little grippy as well, Barbera. And the almighty and famous Nebbiolo that makes some of the most desirable wines in the world, which has it all. It has complexity, it has body, acidity, and so on. Complexity, layers of flavors, etc. So let's have a look at why you should really investigate all those wines and enjoy these three complementary styles from the same region in northern Italy. This is Piedmont's delicious red wine trilogy. Let's go! Yes, let's start with the one in the trio that is probably not uh, the most highly regarded of the bunch, although I personally like Dolcetto wine quite a bit, if only as a contrast to the other two styles that we're going to be talking about as a negative impression, a negative image in the positive sense, the opposite style if you wish. And if only to illustrate how from the same region in terroir you can end up with very different distinct styles by just switching grape. And that's actually very interesting to taste and experience. Plus, the wines are truly good. So what is Dolcetto all about? Well, part of the answer is in the name. Dolcetto comes from dolce, which means sweet in Italian. The name means the little sweet one. And that's not because the wines are literally actually sweet, but because they are nice and pleasing wines, sweet wines. Those wines are sweet. So Dolcetto is a very dark-skinned grape, making for dense and dark, indeed, wines. It's also rather full-bodied and round, with relatively soft tannins, generally speaking, ripe flavors of prune and jammy berries, so it's quite rich, it's quite opulent, it's a little grippy and bitter as well at the same time as it always is in Italy, a little spicy to the finish, which still renders these wines very food friendly enough uh, and with enough grip and personality to be interesting and not just flabby and jammy. But it's this round uh, opulent style that comes out of Piedmont. For this reason, because this rich style is appreciated also internationally, it's been adopted in Australia and even California. They do make some dolcetto there. So it's a real part of the Piedmont wine culture, worth not overlooking, worth trying indeed, if only, of, as I said earlier, for the contrast with the other two styles. Generally speaking, producers don't necessarily pay as much attention to their dolcetto than they would with a Barbera and Nebbiolo, so they don't make it quite as deep and complex, or maybe it's because the grape is not uh, intrinsically as deep and complex. Who knows? Is it the winemakers that don't pay attention, or is it the grapes that's less interesting? Probably a bit of both. 
but anyhow, the wines are still quite enjoyable. So let's mention three reputable appellations exclusively devoted to Dolcetto, so that's Dogliani, Diano d'Alba and Dolcetto di Ovada Superiore. Although of course you'll find more generic IGT, Piedmonte Dolcetto or Dolcetto d'Alba, IGT, more generic appellations as well with delicious Dolcetto as well. And now you know. So if the round and rich Dolcetto style didn't convince you to bring more of your attention to Piedmont wines yet, maybe Barbera well. If you're into more acidic styles of wines, if you like the freshness and the vibrancy, the acidity more than the jamminess and the full-bodiedness, then Barbera is a great grape to have in mind. It's indeed possibly one of the tangier styles I know. It always comes with a very solid acidity, tannins that are generally quite grippy as well, but also plenty of red berry fruit freshness, the tangy sour cherry characteristics as well. So that's for lovers of wines that very much taste like vibrant red, fresh grape juice, dry and acidic at the same time. Very food friendly wines on all Italian cuisine dishes as well. Wonderful with prosciutto and other charcuterie, the cheese, the rich pasta dishes, all perfect for those. So with Barbera, you'll have the affordable ones that can illustrate the style rather well enough, but be wary because they can be a little harsh if they are too cheap. The style kind of wants this uh, a little bit because it's acidic and a little bit tart uh, to start with. So if it's too cheap, it might be a little bit harsh, but many excellent producers that otherwise make fantastic and very reputable Nebbiolo wines in particular, often also pride themselves into making as best a Barbera as they can because it's very typical and you know the pride also of Piedmont. And that's where you can really find some gems. Great Barberas from great terroirs and great producers at a fraction of a price of a Nebbiolo in a very different style and perhaps simpler style yet very enjoyable and quite complex with this distinctive acidic approach. Many appellations for Barbera are of course uh, mainly Barbera d'Alba, Barbera d'Asti or Lange. So you'll have wines from a handful of dollars a bottle to wines easily reaching $50, $70, occasionally $100 plus dollars a bottle. A couple of specific appellations that can be very interesting here are called Colli Tortonesi and that's around the village of Tortona and Barbera d'Alba Superiore Nizza. Very specific appellation, very interesting. Definitely try a Barbera if you haven't yet, if this sounds intriguing and or interesting to you. A very specific, very interesting style. And for sure, Nebbiolo is king in Piedmont. It is without a doubt the most interesting and the most praised red wine grape variety in the area. The grape behind possibly the most beloved Italian red wines, those of Barolo and Barbaresco. Our next episode in this Italian wine series will be entirely dedicated to the DOCG appellations of Barolo and Barbaresco, what they are and how those two villages wines are slightly different from one another. So make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel for this and if you want to go deeper into Nebbiolo. But for here I'll just talk about a few general characteristics of Nebbiolo and which wines you could go for for a taste of it without breaking the bank. So why is Nebbiolo so highly regarded? Well first because it's got it all. A lot of very dense tannins, it's quite full-bodied as well, so it's usually quite a solid dense wine, which is a good start. But it also comes with a lot of acidity as well, so even if it's big it still feels fresh and zingy and not heavy. Then Nebbiolo wines have two main distinctive flavors and aroma signatures, often described as tar and roses. This distinctive and rather unique tarry character, somewhat like a discreet asphalt or bitumen scent, 
gives those wines their typical personality and a savory feel as well. The rose petal element underlines the finesse the wines have with a lightly floral element which is also synonymous with finesse. But you'll also have some dense and ripe red and blackberries characters, some plum in there, a little jammy when the grapes are very ripe which is very often the case with Nebbiolo on the good terroir. So you have High tannins, high acidity, opulent body, fruity, floral, spicy, terry, savory elements. It's very dense, it's complex, yet elegant and refined. Nebbiolo is truly an amazing grape with these characteristics that you simply don't find expressed in this fashion with any other wine. And on top of this, Nebbiolo really only grows well in Piedmont. Hardly any other region in the world has grown or manages to grow successfully this grape, at least certainly not at the level of refinement often achieved in Piedmont, really making this style of wine quite rare considering the high demand. If you still want to taste one without spending on it too much, as much as with a Barolo or Barbaresco that can be quite pricey, well, you can try, try to find some more affordable Barolos and Barbaresco, they do exist from cooperative wineries and they can be really good and representative of the style. With more generic appellations as well, you can find really good Nebbiolos like the Lange Nebbiolo, relatively generic appellation, but also Nebbiolo d'Alba around Alba, uh, the town. It will, if it wasn't in Lombardy, which is next door's region from Piedmont, so a little outside of today's topic, I'd advise you to try a Nebbiolo from an appellation called Valtellina. Excellent value Nebbiolo made in Valtellina. Again, I'll go deeper into the top Nebbiolo wines in our next episode, so I'll leave it here for today. I hope I've left you after this video craving for some red wines from Piedmont. I certainly am personally now myself. If I have done this to you, well, it's probably a good thing, is it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Cheers, arrivederci, ciao ciao.